Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Chad from Grayscale Gorilla. Today we have a special guest. We got Sean Astrom coming on to do a tutorial in Arnold showing you how to do a really cool volume displacement technique. Sean has been on the show a few times. In fact, he was just on our tech podcast a few weeks ago talking about our favorite technology from 2018. So uh, yeah, let's jump in. Hey guys, so here we are in good old Cinema 4D. And I have some renderings pulled up that I made using this technique right in the picture viewer here. Um, yeah, so this is all just using volume displacement within Arnold. And uh, you can see some of these effects that I get are just, I don't know, they're so cool. I, I just love working with volumes. And the fact that you can do this procedurally with cinema's built-in noises is super cool. Um, if we have a look at the Arnold documentation here, you can see they have an awesome uh, little walkthrough here that goes over some of the techniques I'm going to show you uh, today uh, right within the docs here. So that's cool. Um, and then you definitely need to check out Lee Griggs' website. Uh, you can kind of see some of the work he's done. Um, I would say he kind of pioneered this whole look and has done some absolutely amazing renders uh, using this volume displacement here that Arnold can do. So first thing we should probably do is switch over to Arnold here. And under my main settings here, I'm gonna actually turn off GI. And then I'm going to lower my bucket size to 24. And let's bring in an Arnold light. And in the content browser here, I'm gonna bring in a mesh in the sculpting folder, base meshes, male bust. So let's also have this light point at my model here. I'm going to pull this back. Let's get rid of this default material as well. So go to a top view here and I'm going to just get this guy really kind of looking at my model here. And let's scale down the size of this light to 100 by 100. Let's crank up the exposure, samples, lower the spread a little bit. I really want a, a, a bright light hitting this guy. Um, so if we have a look here, you can see what's going on. And we definitely need to increase the geometry on this guy. So I'm going to do that with an Arnold tag. And we'll set this to Cat Clark. And we'll subdivide it a couple times. And I'm just going to drop the displacement to zero. That's just kind of out of habit. We don't need to really necessarily do that. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and create a volume uh, material here with the standard volume and throw that onto our model. Now, you may be thinking it looks kind of the same. Uh, and that is because we have to convert this mesh into a volume using this tag. So this is the Arnold mesh volume tag. And uh, now you should be able to see that we have, in fact, a volume. And this is pretty cool. You can apply this tag to any geometry. Um, if I lower the step size down, this is kind of like the detail of the volume you could think of. Um, and the lower that, that value, the more detail it's going to have, but at the cost of much greater render time. So keep that in mind. So if we hop into this material, we can see that the density value is quite low. So if we crank this up, you can see what's going on here. And that's starting to look like a nice dense volume. And if I go into transparency here, I can lower the depth a little bit too to make that feel a little more solid. So if I just pull up a Cinema 4D noise and plug this guy into the density channel, lower the scale, you can kind of see what's going on there, I hope. Um, and if I increase the contrast here, you can greater see. Uh, but rather than do the contrast here, what I want to do is use a range node. And this will just give me a little more control over exactly uh, you know, what's going on here with this uh, noise. And this is also an Arnold node, and I just think it works a little bit better. Um, so now you can see how that density is being affected with the Cinema 4D noise. So if I switch this to cell, um, you should be able to even you know better see what's going on and if I crank up this contrast to like 50 now we're really starting to get a solid looking volume 
So this is all well and good, but we want to actually displace this. So in order to do that, back into our shader here, we need to plug this guy into the advanced section here, displacement. And I'm gonna unplug density, and you'll see that goes away. There's one other kind of gotcha here, and we need to go back to the mesh volume tag and crank up this volume padding. And once I do that, you'll see that, well, we get something going on here. But this padding value is kind of like a bounding box you could think of. So we want to make sure that this is at least a little bit larger than our model. So back into the good old material here. Um, now with my range values, if I lower this contrast way down, you can see now what the heck's going on. Um, so if I rotate my camera around, you can see how this guy is being displaced kind of off into uh, sort of an average direction here. And let me just go back in here. So we want to be able to control the direction of the displacement a little bit. And for that, we're going to use a vector map node. So I'm going to plug this guy into here and go there. And now you should see that the volume is being displaced in the x direction. So I want this to occur in the z. So we're going to go into tangent and normal here. And we're just going to put a value of 1. and now the displacement is occurring in the z direction. So now you can maybe start to see what's going on um, and how we can get closer to that look. So back into our good old material here. I am going to switch the noise over to something like Nakai, crank up the samples, maybe change the seed and the scale. Um, that's looking really cool. So with this, we, we're, we're halfway there. Um, we are missing the ability to control how the, the displacement might occur on the back of the head and how it might not occur on the face, if that's what we're going for. And so to do something like that, we need a layer RGBA. And I'm going to plug this guy into the first slot here. And then I'm going to bring in a ramp node and let's plug this guy into the mix, actually. And you'll see that that no longer kind of works. Um, and the reason is this ramp node needs to be set to U. But we need to put in some coordinates here. And for that, I'm going to use the camera projection node. And we'll project this guy right into here. And now you can see, hopefully, that with this ramp shader, we have now control over where this stuff is occurring. Um, and this is kind of exactly what we're going for. So that's working well. The only other thing is we need to get those awesome colors that Lee gets in his um, renderings here. And that's pretty easy as well. We can just copy this camera node here, bring in an image, and this is any old 2D texture. I was playing around with these earlier. Um, I'm going to grab this Mars texture, plug this guy into this camera node. Now all we need to do is plug this into uh, the scattering color works well. Um, and so, yeah, you guys can see exactly what's going on here. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Now remember, this default camera is mapped to my nodes here, these uh, camera projection nodes. So if we want, we can add in a new camera, call this UV, and then let's just um, swap that into here. Um, so we'll go UV there, UV there. And if I just lock this guy, if I'm happy with the position, now I can rotate my camera around, and that's not going to have an effect on the projection of those um, shaders. So yeah, guys, so it's literally as simple as that. Um, the only other thing I might do is hop into my mesh volume tag, lower this to like a value of one. Um, on my renderings I did that I showed you in the beginning, I had this even lower to like 0.1, but the render times do go up quite considerably. Um, and lastly, if we hop into our, ta uh, or our light rather, 
If we crank up the volume samples to something like six, that's gonna clean that up quite a bit as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this to Picture Viewer um, using uh, my uh, team render here. So I have another computer hooked up and this hopefully should uh, make things go a little quicker. But yeah, guys, let's see what happens here. Um, that's maybe the one downside with this technique is the render times can get a little slow, but you can't deny that this isn't really cool. I mean, we're displacing volumes. Um, I don't actually know of any other engines that can do this at the moment. Um, so that's pretty exciting to know. But yeah, we'll go ahead and let this finish up here. And uh, it's not taking too long. Um, but yeah, I think this is looking pretty darn cool. Obviously, with a little more finesse and time, you could get in here and really make this look awesome. But yeah, guys, so that is Arnold Volume Displacement. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Thanks again. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for watching, and thank you, Sean, for putting together this tutorial. If you have any questions about this technique, hit us in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.